Amen. Good evening, everyone. Good Amen. evening, Ulua Pelumi. Good evening to everyone at the Explore, Explore Network. Good evening to all the graduating students. Today, I celebrate you. I honor you. It's such a privilege to be amongst God's people, to just share his word and his heart with us. I believe very strongly. Ooh, aha, I see that already. Ooh, tonight is an activation meeting, so be sensitive in the spirit. Ooh, there will be activations going on right now, wherever you are, literally. Ooh, and there is a mighty Russian wind as Zuzu Zazata, Ele Kokota Balatia, and the Lukasatea. There's a mighty rushing wind, a Zuza Zatila Makuta Lahia, and the Kukata Lebaratoya Tea. Thank you, Jesus. Salamino Sata Le Cariate. Embretutu Kaliba Atibro Olo Zotale, Mika Rosso Sataliha. I believe tonight's meeting is an activation meeting. So many of you will literally be activated into new dimensions of who you are, that you will live here with such capacity to deploy, such power and empowerment to deploy, that which you have come to know that the Lord has created for you in this season. And my prayer for you is that you yield yourself completely to the Holy Spirit as he does what he wants to do tonight. And even as you live here, to be able to now start doing that which he wants you to do, or even still, increase the capacity in which you are doing what he has called you to do amen father thank you for today thank you because i know your will is established in every one of our lives here today in jesus name amen again queen Alua Kualumi, you are blessed you are highly favored you know as i was listening to you speak the lord just began to say to me or as he's saying to me now that he because he calls you blessed he calls you favored he calls you blessed. He calls you favored. And because he calls you blessed and favored, kings will come to the brightness of your rising. He says everywhere he sent you to, the kings of that nation will come to the brightness of your rising. They will seek you out because of the wisdom the Lord is bestowing upon you, the favor and the blessings he's bestowing upon you in this season of your life, just as you continue to yield and partner with him. And I have locked faith with you and I declare it is established in your life and that of your family in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, I bring Calvary greetings from all of us at Kingdom Influencers Global, which is a ministry where I humbly serve as the chief steward. We are delighted to bring God's word, God's message to you today. And I pray it blesses you indeed. Amen. So very quickly, we are going to be talking about ready, set, deployed as is the team of our graduation ceremony. And the Lord gave me a scripture. That's the scripture we are going to be dissecting as we go through today's conversation. I believe that at the end of this conversation, we're going to pray. But we have to teach the word of the Lord first to give us context as to why we're having this conversation. And then I believe we can now pray as the Holy Spirit leads. Hebrews chapter 10 from verse 7. Please do well to go with me to the scriptures. Then I said, look, I have come to do your will, O God, at, as it is written about me in the scriptures. This was Jesus talking about himself. I have come to do your will, O God, as it is written about me in the scriptures. Let's look at this statement critically. Then I said, look, I have come to do your will, O God, there's so many punctuations in this scripture, and I want to explain it with those punctuations. Then I said, that means I came to a realization. Amen? I came to a realization. That's why he said, then I said. That means I now realized that I have come to do your will. Oh, God, meaning he recognized or he came to the realization that he was sent in submission to God. Oh God, I have come to do your will. Oh God. That means he came to a realization that he has come to do the will of God as it is written about him in the scriptures. This statement speaks about an awareness that you are called and sent specifically by Elohim to do his will. Therefore, purpose is not just what you love, 
or how flavor, it is the will of God that you were designed and encrypted to do from beginning of times. I want you to say that to yourself wherever you are. It's not just what you love or have flair for. It's the will of God that you have literally been designed and encrypted for from the beginning of times. That means in your DNA, there's an encryption or encoding that speaks to the will of Elohim that you have been carrying from the day you were born. In fact, from before you were born. When the scripture says God breathed into a man and he became a living soul, it's at the point where a breath is put in your nostrils. That means when you are formed inside. In fact, before he formed you, he knew you, right? But let's take it from the formative place in the human body. The minute you get a breath and then you assume a zygote or an embryo in the, in the womb of a woman, at that point, my dear brethren, there's an encoding within your DNA that speaks to the will of Elohim you are carrying that must be manifest. So for so many of you, preferably, you are 30, 20, you have been carrying in your DNA 20 years of encoding or encryption that needs to be decoded. Amen? For so many of you in your 20s, 30s, you have been carrying encodings in your DNA or encryptions in your DNA that must be decoded or encrypted or decrypted, I don't mean, or decrypted for you to truly enter into the wheel of Elohim. So it's not new. Your lights and flare may just be an indicator pointing to the wheel of the monarch that, that you carry. That means that you can't find and walk in purpose outside God. If you find and walk in purpose outside God, it becomes self. And that means you are practicing idolatry. If the very reason you were sent here was because Elohim, i.e. the monarch of the universe, had a plan, had a will, had a desire. If you then go and find something outside his will, outside his person, what you are finding is maybe going to point to something you were designed to do, but if it's not under his government, it becomes self, it becomes idolatry. And that is how people literally build Babel instead of Bethel. And so scattered across the world that we live in today are people who do good work, but not God work. There are lots of good works that are not God work. And that's why Jesus was saying that, listen, in that end time or on that day, so people will come to him and say, master, we casted out demons in your name. We did all kinds of miracles. And you say, go away. I didn't know you. What Jesus was trying to imply in that scripture is, there were men and women who thought they were doing what was God, but was just good. And if it's good, all it's doing is serving you and it's not serving the purposes of God. If it's serving you and not the purposes of God, then it's Babel. It has no way it's going to stand. And when the wind of God comes to blow his wind, to sift between those who are doing his work, those works will be tested. So it's important that every single one of us know that Purpose must originate from God. It cannot be outside his will. As a matter of fact, I say to people, every time you want to find your purpose, find God. When you find God, you find your purpose because you are not grafted away from him. You are hewn from that rock. So that means in finding what that rock was hewn for, you must go to the place where it was hewn for. Let me give you a typical example. You cut a bit or a, a, you have a, a little size of rock from Olumba rock. And you take that little size of rock that you have and take to a laboratory. And they're checking this, the rock for all kinds of minerals and elements. And when they finish breaking it down, they tell you, oh, this um, small piece that you brought has elements of cobalt. Do you see what I'm saying? And then they begin to tell you, we're not certain if it's cobalt or not, but it looks like cobalt. It's giving very, I mean, different elements of cobalt, different behaviors, behavioral pattern or symptoms of cobalt. But in order for us to cement, let us find out where did you get this from? We either want to check the surrounding of where you got the rock from or check the place you got the, the rock itself that this piece fell from. So in that case, you who took the rock to the laboratory would have to go back to that Ulumo rock where you got, or Zuma rock as case may be, where you got that piece from and say, you know what? The people in the laboratory are trying to find the elements within this thing and what it is useful for. Or they are suspecting they are finding particular element traits that will speak to them whether what is inside this rock is profitable or not. I will take them to the source. 
And from that source, they'll look at the environment of the source, they'll look at the nature of the source, they'll look at the nature of the rock, and they can say for certain what they are seeing in that laboratory, whether it's true or not. Amen? Amen? I use the typical example, right, of typical rocks. How the scripture says we are hewn from him. So if you are going to know the traits and the characteristics and the usefulness of the rock that is hewn from a bigger rock, you must go to the parent rock and check the environment and all the different things to know exactly what it carries, if you are in doubt. In that same similitude, you who is a child of Jesus Christ, to find who you truly are, it cannot be far from the rock you were hewn. So to find their purpose, find God. And I'll give you examples. About seven eight or ten maybe eight or nine years ago now i can't remember exactly i woke up one day with a realization and now maybe i'm just going to share this story and then we'll move from here i woke up one day about 10 or nine years ago i can't remember now with a realization that my life was empty and let me tell you at this time at this time i had in a very high paying job in a bank one of the biggest banks in nigeria in fact africa maybe in the world you know and i was promoted every other every other year in my banking career and people felt it just was living the life because everybody would say this babe who do you know why are they promoting you like this and frankly at that time i did not know god of course i was a christian but i didn't have a relationship i was not even a church goer my job was so demanding, I didn't have time to go to church. Mondays to Sundays, I was at work. So, no, I did not have a Christian work. But I knew I had given my life to Christ sometime in secondary school. I was not a practicing believer, even though I carried that badge of Christianity. I seemed to be doing well in my corporate job, excellently well. But you see, one day I woke up and my, I felt empty. And at that time, I didn't have a lot of friends. I've always been a lone ranger. I didn't have a lot of friends. But I knew there was something tugging within me. And my life was empty. And so that period, I had a child. So I went on maternity leave. And in that maternity leave, I said to God, or oh, well, I, I thought I said to God, because like I said, I didn't have a, a, practice, a working relationship. I just knew God existed. In fact, I didn't used to pray. Let me not lie. I'm being honest with us here. I didn't used to pray. But I knew my father is a, my father is a, what's that church now? My father goes to one church like, the Lord chosen. They used to pray. So I knew my father's covering was there. So all the good things that were happening in my life was because my father was covering me. I didn't have any prayer altar. So I said one day to God, I just said it during that my maternity leave. I just had my son. And I said, God, I will not go back to work if you don't show me why you put me here on earth. That's how I said it, very casually. Remember, I was speaking to a God who I don't remember ever praying to, who I don't even read my Bible. I literally don't do any of those stuff. But I bloated it out in sincerity of heart. Because I desperately wanted to find more. I was empty. And in several multiple seven figures yet, nothing to show for it. It was almost as though the devourer planted itself and literally everything was leaking. And I blotted out that simple statement. And fast forward to during my maternity leave, three weeks into my maternity leave, um, I turned, I think I turned 30. And then my husband threw a surprise birthday party, had called some of our friends. And as they came, it turned into like a surprise birthday party i was happy and then they told me to give like a thank you speech to my husband you know our friends then and then when i opened my mouth and began to speak it felt as though i had been speaking for a long time because everybody now the room now became mute they were wondering who is this because they all only knew me as a banker they knew me as the wife of mr ibe they have never seen an orator who could arrest an audience and keep them mute and so when I was done giving that speech, we began to clap and clap and clap. And I was wondering, what's doing all these people? Why are they uh, clapping or this clap? But my husband says to me, he said, I think you should do this for the rest of your life. He said it very casually. I said, do what? He said, what you just did. That's how he said it. And I said, okay. I just took it very casually. Remember, I had blocked that out. 
in the beginning of my maternity leave, I will not go back to work if you don't send me why you put me, if you don't tell me why you put me here on earth. Just like that. And so my husband, in his good in kindness, found um three or four different public speaking classes or coaches in Nigeria, top three, and enrolled me for their classes, you know, since I was on maternity leave. So I just went on those classes with no clue as to what I was doing. I was just learning, quote and unquote. So from learning from here, learning from here, learning from different people, I just started, you know, coaching, teaching, um, um, helping business people, and all of that. I was doing it successfully. Follow me. I did this for over four or five years. Coaching, mentor, um, 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 coaching businesses, speaking, teaching. I was doing it, and I was earning so much. Guess what? In this so-called coaching, teaching business, I was earning times three my annual income as a banker. Do the maths. While still in banking. So I was earning banking money and I was earning um, um, business money by the side. So I was so ambitious that I would work from morning to six or seven. And then by eight, I start my, I used to call it side hustle there. I would start my side hustle, work into the night. I was driving myself so much. And I felt I was working in purpose because, A, I was doing good, helping businesses. Businesses were making more money. They were growing. They were starting, literally. So there was some level of impact. I'm going somewhere with this story. Don't get carried away. Remember I said earlier that there is good work and there is God work. There is good work and there is God work. I said it earlier. So this is me who for four or five years, I was doing well any money, helping businesses. Helping people, people everywhere start calling me coach, 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 consultant, consultant, literally. And then at the end of at the end of 2019, I began to feel that emptiness again. So I'm like, Edjo, what's going on? What have I been doing all this while? I was crying for more. This thing opened up. This one opened up now. I've done it where I've made some good money. Now I'm feeling that emptiness I felt before. What's going on? What's going on? And then, as of 2018, 2019, it was then I realized that God was ready to put his leg to say, hey, this girl, I want to start my own. Now, what I have been doing is good work. I want to start God work. You can feel free to unmute and draw your expressions. It's okay. I would like to be here then. Hello, <laughs> Because I think you're laughing. <laughs> <laughs> my god my students will be able to relate better now because you know during the class we talked about the framework was about the purple wheel and somebody asked that is it possible to go back to the beginning and i said yes that because oh, wow. you get to a point and you feel that you are doing everything but there is still something more that you're supposed to do and you get back yeah. to the beginning of the wheel again <laughs> yeah so yes so you see they're saying it makes sense now yeah so thank you holy spirit because i want to know this was not what i wrote down i had no but the only thing just say, say, share this story so that was how at the end of 2019 let me just give you a mental picture imagine that i was earning seven million annually just imagine right i'm not saying that's the actual figure and then in my consulting business i was earning 21 million right just do the maths and then by 2019 god better lay my business Imagine making 21 million naira in 2019, 2018, and in 2019, I didn't make 1,000 naira. Yes. It was then I realized something has to be wrong from somewhere. In that season, God began to use my best friend to speak to me. Let's get to know God. Though. Let's get to know God. Though. And the most he kept saying that, I kept wondering, what does this get me? Is this, I don't I know God. Am I serving Satan? But she would always say things like, look at this person. See the way this person talks about God. Do you have that relationship with God? And every time she shares those pictures, those write-ups with me, I would be convicted in my heart because I knew I didn't have that relationship with God. So at that 2019, the minute God blessed lay everything, 21 million naira, 1,000 naira, I couldn't cry. I couldn't wait. I could, there's not like, you would not know that it has finished, has finished. So at this point, you know what I began to do? I went to go and buy our daily manna. And I went to look for my Bible where it was hidden. I had not read Bible for so long. I'm sharing this story for a reason. There are so many people who you are clapping for today who are doing good work, not God work. In that season, I had followers, tens of thousands. 
across the globe who are applauding me, calling my name, shouting, you are a blessing, you are God sent. Yes, I had not read Bible for four years. I was operating in Sophia, the wisdom of men. I know, I don't know why I'm sharing this thing. So I wasn't even meant to, I had no business sharing this. Long and short, the minute God best LA, I went to go and buy our daily manner and I brought out my message Bible from where I have hidden it. I started to read and just get to know God gradually. And I, I decided I was going to start going to church. So there was a church not far from my office. I had been seeing them, seeing them. I said, you know what? Let me start. No, thankfully, that season, the pastor of the church came into my bank and saw me reading books. And he says, sir, you're the head of this branch. I see how busy you are, but I also see that you read your book a lot. How do you make the time? And I smiled and told the man, I said, I have to do what I have to do. I have a lot of commitments. He just smiled and gave me an invitation to one of their programs in church. So in that season was when I was trying to start my relationship with God. And I just said, you know what? Let me go for this church program. That's how I went. And from that day, I became hooked. It was not far from my office. So every week, midweek service or Sunday service, or I will sneak out of the office and we go for that service. And I began to read my daily manner, read my Bible. I began to get light. I began to get light. Maybe because, of course, you know, by the grace of God, God, I'm, I'm a hungry person, right? I'm a hungry person. Hunger unlocks so many things in the realm of the spirit. Now, if your hunger is not under the submission of the Holy Spirit, you got to unlock darkness. So your hunger must be submitted to the spirit of God. And so as I began to read, I began to see light from the scriptures. So from January 2019 to October 2019, I did not make 1,000 naira in my business. When the previous year, I did over 20 million. I'm just giving that as an example now. I'm not saying that's the actual figure. And at that point, by October, I now began to hear. Hear. Like I'll just hear my spirit do this, do that, do this, do that. Right? And the minute I began to obey, 1,000 Naira became 150,000. Before the end of that year, I think I did about 300,000, you know, in income compared to... Now, remember, I had built my standard of living to what I was earning from my side business. So I had, there had to be a rough adjustment in the house. We now had to stick to salary that we never talked to before. All these things God was doing to bring me back into his horizon because he wanted to start God work and shut down good work. Now, at 2020, I've become very, you know, at least at taking God's word seriously. And then by 2020, he led me to go for a program. And from that program, I broke out. Like literally, the Holy Ghost invaded me in dimensions I can't explain. And in that meeting that I went for, it felt as though God came for only me in that meeting. Because everybody was wondering, who is this person? Why is it that the power of God is so mighty on them? And the whole, like literally the whole congregation of over 300 people, only one person. And the person who was anchoring the meeting said, give this person six months, you will not recognize them. She said, that's what the Holy Ghost told her. She said, just give me this girl six months, you will recognize her. And true to that word, my dear brothers and sisters, in six months, time, in six months, I saw a 360 times 100 shift in my life. So because I was already faithful in my good work, I didn't know how to show up and be diligent. I already had passion and dedication and zeal. God leveraged on that and took it. Remember what happened to Saul? Saul was already a zealous man in the things he was doing that he thought was God work. When, the, uh, when the, the Jesus Christ met him, what happened? It was a radical shift, but God laid out on what he had already been doing. So I had a sore moment. And that's why it may look as though, uh -uh, this woman, when did she start? Look at what God is doing with her. I had a sore moment. When did Paul start? Paul didn't walk with Jesus Christ one-on-one. -on -one. But still what happened? He did more work than all the others who did one-on-one -on -one work with Jesus. I had a sore moment. And the minute Jesus took over, what happened? All I needed to do was lay down my life completely. And that takes us to the first place. Purpose. The minute you realize that 
you are called. The first stage, the, the first stage is submission to the government of the caller. The first stage is submission to the government of the caller. When God arrested Saul, God, God, what must I do? The first stage is submission to the government for more. If you don't submit to the government for more, more doesn't come. If direction, impact, and the list is endless. Submission to the government. And when he said, Lord, what must I do? God told him, go to X, Y, Z. You will meet this person and he will tell you what to do. So stage one is submission to the government of your court. Stage two is knowing him. Don't come to God. Say, God, I'm coming to you because I want to know purpose. God will say, hey, I know, but know me. If you don't know me, then no, there ain't no purpose. Stage two is knowing him. In knowing him, his word, his name, his voice. His word, his name, his voice. That means there is no purpose if you don't find Hebrews chapter 10 verse 7 of your own name. Jesus found it in Isaiah. He said, give me the scroll. He said, this scripture is fulfilled in your face today. I come. So ain't no purpose if you don't find you in this word. Ain't no purpose. Jesus' ministry was not activated until he found that scripture and he went in the power of that scripture. I come in the volume of the books as it is written of me. You are not going to fulfill purpose. You are not going to be deployed excellently if you don't go in the volume of the books as it is written of you. Knowing him, his word, his name, his voice, what an anointing of the Holy Ghost. There are activations going on now. There are activations going on now. For some of you, you will literally be screaming under the anointing. For some of you, your stomach rumbling like a rushing fire. Literally, for some of you, your hands burning and shaking. For some of you, you literally can't move. For some of you, you are mute. There are activations going on now by the Spirit of God Himself. For some of you, you can't stop praying the Holy Ghost. For some of you, there are contractions. You are feeling contracted as though you are about to birth. I need to rush. I have less than 20 minutes because I have another meeting. Second stage, building intimacy. Prayer, obedience. Building intimacy. Prayer, obedience. I'm telling you the stages before you are ready, set, and deployed. Third stage, allowing his pruning. Without the pruning of God, you cannot go far. On that pruning, that's where you see character development. Jesus, who is the word? Do you know why God left him for 30 years before activating him? Imagine God leaving heaven and coming here. If they did not allow Jesus pride, though, they would have been pride. If he didn't have to go through pruning and character development, like he's God, he came down. Now like he's looking at his subject and saying, you're talking to me, I created you. So he had to go through pruning and development. And because he submitted to the entire training process, it felt as though, it feels as though, it is as though, it is not even as though, it is such that Jesus is still the greatest of all time. Nobody has beaten the record. You know why? He submitted to the pruning process. He did. If he did not, his ministry would have taken longer. That's why the scripture says he did not consider it robbery. He submitted himself even unto his death on the cross. So you want to fulfill purpose. You want to be deployed by God. Yet, you are not submitted to the God who sent you. Where are you going to? You will not go far. It's just a matter of time. The same God who sent you will say, come, go and sit there inside the cave of Adulam for a while, please. We still have some work to do. Why? I told you earlier that in that season where it felt as though I was doing good work, Satan was happy because as long as it's not God work, he knew that this person was building Babel. You know how you have, you know how you will know you are building Babel. It's about you. Self will be so gratified. In those seasons, I was interested in money. I was making good money. Yes, some great impact here and there, but I was amassing wealth. 
Babel. Another thing you must pay attention to so that you know you'll be sure you're not building Babel is Babel carries the similitude of what looks like Bethel. There will be unity of purpose. Imagine those who are going to build toward Babel. We're not all united with one voice. So you may be building what is Babel and you think it's better because there's unity of purpose. Babel also has or it promotes a sense of belonging to a greater good. You will feel like you're adding value to the society because you have one million people who are screaming your name. You blessed me. You changed my life. You did this. You did that. It promotes a sense of belonging in the society. And so one of the things I want you to ask yourself here today is what am I truly building? Am I building Babel or Bethel? You have to ask. And when you look at what you're building and there's no allegiance to God, go back. When you look at what you're building and there's no submission to God, go back. When you look at what you're building and he does not have a say, go back. When you look at what you're building and the last time you heard clear instructions about what you're building, you can't remember, go back. When you look at what you're building and that's all been strategy, 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 wisdom of men, go back. Because if God truly sent you, can I be honest? Do you know the uh, function of the Holy Spirit? He will guide you into all truths. That means you should never lack strategy. If it's God that called you and sent you in that place. Except he tells you, go to that verse. Amen? But at, at every point in time, you're going to look for people to help you navigate what God has called you to do. Who called you? Why are you looking for men when the person who called you is there? So access what you're building. Access what you're building. Is it Bethel or Babel? With Bethel, you would realize that it's centered on God, his will, his purposes. You are driven by all the things he wants to do and you are aligning with him. And going back to my story, the Lord said that I should go back and continue. <laughs> and so after the Lord started his work after I encountered him or he invaded me he began to give me a vision of what was on his heart vis-a-vis -vis what I thought was good that I was doing all this while and he says yes I'm sending you to people but not in the capacity you think you're doing it's in my own capacity my desire, my will, my purpose and so I had built a consulting career, top three, top four, in Nigeria slash Africa. And all of a sudden, I wake up one morning and the Lord tells me, the same business page you're using, start talking about intimacy with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> it was then that I understood what it meant to have what they call in branding, murder. You are murdering your brand. I had people call me and say to me, I don't know what's going on with you but you're going to kill your brand. You better stop it. Stop it. Why don't you go and open another page and do all these God things you are doing and leave your business page where you are living it? But God was clear. He said, do exactly what I have told you to do. So I started the same. So if you know me, if you want to know, you can go down my business, my, my current page, you'll see how I started. And then I was very, very meticulous with content, videos, all of those things. I will show up correct. So imagine doing makeup for all those my professional video. If you want to make 10, 10x your money, your business money in this, 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 click on the link below. And the Lord made me start doing the exact same posture, power pose, this time talking scriptures. In Genesis chapter 3, verse 5, so picture the flip. And people are looking at uh, Jokilo lady, who is she again? And it started like that. For three weeks, the Lord gave me a program called You Are Called, where we began to talk to people about their call and all of that. We finished that. The next thing says start another mentoring program. So it's funny how a person who came from the backside of being a business consultant all of a sudden became a Holy Spirit coach, intimacy coach, quote and unquote. And guess what? The kind of results people were getting from my mentoring, I had never recorded it in all my life of mentoring people. It's almost as though God put his hand on me and said, I'm going to prove my call on your life. Anyone who encounters you. And so the many people will come. They were struggling with hearing God. 
the minute they will come, they will go through the program. They can hear clearly. They can understand clearly. They are moving clearly. I'm like, okay, ah, God, this thing you called me to do is working on. And from there, God began to impregnate me with mighty vision. Now, I started building all the things you have read in this bio now. But this time around, God work, not good work. This time around, his visions, his purposes, his desires, his will, his plan, his action. God began to give me his big African dream. What I read to you about the African dream, I, I didn't conceive it. God told me, this is the African dream. Read it to Africans. I have a dream that one day Africa will become one big nation. God gave me what he wants to do with Africa in the scriptures. One nation under one king in Ezekiel. One nation under one king. For every organization I have founded, there were scriptures. When we were founding the Association of African Startups, he said, Nehemiah 2.17, raise three people who will build the walls of Africa. But I was coaching businesses before, what was I doing? Self, idolatry, Babel. It became kingdom. God now instituted his will through his word. We are building on that foundation. The same thing with every single organization and ministry that I'm building today is founded on the will and desire of God that is scriptural. When God gives you scripture, he now gives you the contextual equivalent. Meaning, I have told you, go and raise men who will build the walls of Africa. But he will now break down that language in lingua that you can sell to the world. So I can create master classes in the Association of African Startups, but it's on the bedrock of go and raise me men who will build the walls of Africa. You know why I'm sharing all of this story? Is that your purpose is embedded in God. Without him, is God is good work, not good work. And good work will die. I'm telling you. You know how I know? The Bible says, and in those days, it says the mountain of the Lord's house will be exalted. It says, and all nations will flow to it. All. That means all the people who are doing good work now that are not God work, all of them, they are coming. Oh, they are coming. They will come and meet us and say, show us how your God is doing it. Because God will carry people like me from the backside of nowhere and will confound principalities. He will carry people like me and you from the backside of nowhere. And one, you see, people who have built decades and decades of name, of impact and all that. And then you come from nowhere. And God is like, you, let me use you to show them what it means to be a God child and, a, and doing God work. And those who have been doing it several decades will now come to you and say, come, we've been doing this thing for four decades. You came, you did it for just one decade. See what you are doing. How are you doing it? The mountain of the Lord's house will be exalted. So I ask you again, what are you building? Babel or Bethel? Whether it's a business that you are running today or a career or a ministry or even um, a conference or a side hustle, whatever you are building today, are you building Babel or you are building Bethel? Because you are building Babel, you are wasting your time. It's going to crash. It's going to fall. Except it's not God you are serving. If it's God you are serving, or he will bring his winnowing wind. He will blow through it. And when he blows through what is not of him, we collapse. Only what is of him will stand. So if I were you, my dear, I will go and submit everything and be right and say, Father, I beg, look through it. Anything that is Babel, take it down. So that you can start your journey on time. Don't waste time. Don't go and do good work for 10 years. And then after 10 years, you now realize that you're doing good work, not good work. It's a waste of time. In my own case, God had mercy on me. I was doing good work for four years. And at that point, he just put his leg and said, let me just help this girl and move her to God work. So imagine if I was doing God work from that four years I had wasted. Do you know the mileage I would have covered? Do you know? As I'm telling to somebody who is here, carry what you do now under the umbrella of light and let him see through it. The next thing to pay attention to in this journey of purpose is that it is progressive. What you know about your calling today will progressively open up as you grow. Don't box God in or don't put God in a box. Don't limit him. He's not our mate. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. When God began to show me the big African vision, 
One day God told me something so big that I told him, sorry, can we change the subject? And you know what God said to me, Daddy, that made me fear him? He said, just, do you want to come up, my, come up to my level? You want to bring me down to yours? The minister said that I was very afraid. It's the tone he said it for me. Almost like Mumbai sorrow. And you are telling me, I'm um, sorry. You know, how you, you know how we negotiate ourselves out of big things because we can't fathom it. Because we can't, our small mind can't fathom it. And we forget that it's Elohim we're speaking to. And that day, it looks like I forgot myself that it's Elohim I'm talking to. Because what he was telling me had never been done in Africa. It had never been done. Anybody who attempted to do this would kill the person with God like this. And God was like, I want to do it with you. I'm like, sorry, um, can we change the topic? I said it very casually. But he said, if you want to come up, come up, we don't attempt to bring me to your level. Almost like we're going to shake my I have to start begging for repentance. But you see, it felt as though every time God attempts to bring you into significant, to big things that he sees that you can't see, if you don't accept it, it will be locked for a season. I just gave somebody a code. I just gave you a code. It will be locked for a season. It will be, don't open it. She's not ready. And that she's not ready can cost you another 10 years. It can cost you another 10 years. So be like that man that say, I believe, help my own belief. Be like that man. So that God will not say, okay, she wants to accept. Let me just open it up to her gradually and give her line upon line, precept upon precept. And so as I began to open it up to me, I began to see how that this journey is progressive. This journey is progressive. All I need to do is allow him or submit to him and allow him prune me to make me into the person who can fit into the different categories of the journey. The Josie Bay who is serving the people she's serving today, in the next five years, the category of persons that will come to her will change. Presidents will begin to come. Five years is too long. Presidents will begin to come. They will sit. They will eat at my table. They will eat at from my hands. Literally, the nations will want to plan their year. They will say, we need to go and sit down with that wise woman. The way the Queen of Sheba came all the way from Ethiopia and came to sit with Solomon to ask him hard questions. They will come and ask me. But God has shown me all these things. It's not for me to sit there and say, God, I will fast and pray in the next 24 hours. It's going to happen. How? No. Purpose is, um, is, is, is unfolding. You must grow with the vision. And your ability to enter into the big vision is your yieldedness quotient. That means your ability to yield to God will make you. They say make you required of the man who will be deployed. Remember, it is already set deployed. There's a making of the man who will be ready, set, and deployed. The making is that entire process that upgrades your OS, your operating system, to become like Elohim's operating system. When the scripture says in Isaiah, my ways are not your ways, my thoughts are not your thoughts, it's not because God was trying to tell you to stay in your lane. No. That statement was not a stay in your lane statement. It was a aspire to the level where I am. Does this make sense to somebody? So some of you read that scripture and say, after Lord, my ways are not your ways. Your ways are not my ways. Please don't let you know. No. It's a statement of invitation. So that you can say, I want to enter where you are, God. And can I be honest, my dear people, one of the reasons I have entered into a very big visions is this thing I just told you. It's one of, it's one of my biggest secrets. The day God told me, my ways are not your ways, your ways are not my ways. I asked him, I said, Lord, I want to think like you. I want to act like you. I want to see like you. I want to be you. So, so I asked the Lord. And he laughed. That day I asked him, he laughed. After I laughed, he said to me, he said, do you know what you're asking for? That's what he asked me back. I said, well, I may not know the fullness, but I know I want it. And guess what? The desire was not strained because the Holy Ghost put it in there. Remember, the work of the Holy Ghost is to guide you into all truths. He will reveal the deep things of God. 
So in that moment, aye kata halabito peteti borokate bosatale. Embreke totali boratali monsante. Mante ko patata. A bebe totolakita barato sante. In that moment, the Holy Ghost was setting the mind of God. And he saw that this girl, if she could just ask, I will bring her. And he put the desire in me. As he put the desire in me, I opened up my mouth. And I spoke. And the minute I asked, the Lord laughed. I said, do you know what you're asking for? I said, I may not know the fullness, but I want it. He said, very well then. And what began to happen after then changed my life completely. But look me, I'm not capable of thinking like men anymore till Jesus comes. I can't. I can't. I'm serious. But I, I can't think like a man anymore. I can't. If you bring a situation, I can't see how men are thinking. I'm seeing how God is thinking. In a, like it has shaped me. It has marked me. It has changed my life forever. So you are bringing problems. I can't see it. I'm thinking solutions. I can't see the problem. It's not because I mean, I'm I'm being um, 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 cynical. It's something Elohim did. I just think solutions. Because my thoughts are not his thoughts. My ways are not his ways. And so the promptest question that comes to my heart is, what will Jesus do? What will Jesus do? What will Jesus do? What will Jesus do? In every situation. Sometimes when flesh attempts to take over, I'm quick to see it. Say, this is flesh. Holy Ghost, help me. Yes. Right. That being said, I'm going to wrap up by reading 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 5. And then we'll pray very briefly so I can let you go. Because I also need to go. 1 Timothy 1 verse 5. Thank you, Holy Spirit. The purpose of my instruction is that all believers will be filled with love that comes from a pure heart, a clear conscience, and genuine faith. To be ready, set, and deployed, the posture of your heart is as important as the work. God is not looking for vine dressers who are ambitious. He's looking for vine dressers whose heart are pure. That's what the Bible says, who will ascend into the hill of God, those with pure hearts, those with clean hands. It's a requirement for deployment. It's a requirement for deployment because a heart without love and without purity will be easily corrupted by Satan. So it's in your interest to partner with the Holy Ghost to work out of you a pure heart. It's in your interest to say, Holy Ghost, try my thoughts, touch my heart. If there's any wicked way, Pull it out. Judge it. It is in your interest. Listen, every one of you are on a journey of appraisal. You, that's why the Bible says, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You must be monitoring your life. And submit it to the Holy Ghost. It's the Holy Ghost. Today, oh, I noticed that I was not kind to people. I was very self-inclined throughout today. Help me. If you are ignorant about the things that the enemy is planting as seeds, how will you approach it? Why men sleep? The enemy sowed seed. If you are ignorant of the seed being sown, how will you uproot it? And you say you are doing purpose. That's why you find people who are, quote and unquote, doing the work of God, the same ones, harming the people who they are sent to help. Why? Because they are not paying close attention to their salvation and walking down with fear and trembling. We are so engrossed in, I want to fulfill purpose. I want to fulfill purpose. But we have forgotten that to be deployed. Clear conscience. Pure heart. As I leave you here today, I want us to pray for the next few minutes. Father, purge my motives. Purge my motives. I want you to begin to pray where you are. Because that's the only thing that can make me fall very quickly. That's the only thing that can delay your deployment. That's the only thing that can delay your manifestation. That's the only thing that can make you a cost to the people you should be a blessing to. So begin to pray right now. Lord, purge my motive. Purge my motive. Oh God, everywhere that you have sent me to, purge my motive. Anything that you have laid in my hand, purge my motive. Anywhere they self, there's ambition. Anywhere Anywhere that there is mammon, oh God, purge my motive. Anywhere that there is unbelief, 
Purge my motive. Anywhere there is anger, bitterness, envy, jealousy, purge my motive and make me the exact person for your work in this season in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I declare over everyone who is here. There's a spirit the Lord asked me to release here today. Mm -hmm. And that's the spirit of the fear of God. Mm. Mm. Ooh. It's a baptism of the spirit of the fear of God. Ooh. In this moment, there's a baptism of the fear of God. Ooh. In this moment, some of you will literally feel like there's a presence in your room. You will literally feel that awe, oh, that reverence. In this moment, I release that spirit of the fear of God. I release that spirit of the fear of God because the fear of God that will make you walk out of salvation with fear and trembling. I release that spirit of the fear of God. Is that fear of God also that will let you enter into wisdom and depth in God because the Bible says the secrets of the Lord are with those who fear him so you want to enter secrets for manifestation there's the fear of the Lord that must encompass you oh Lord I thank you for what you have done today be there exalted in Jesus name we have prayed amen and amen Thank you so much. I thought I unmuted myself. I will say thank you so much.